Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today this is going to be a really interesting one. A, a good one, definitely. Um, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, uh, yes, go out and buy this, whatever variant that is available at the moment, because it's a wonderful, wonderful blade shape and just an all-around great user. But if you want to stick around and learn some stuff about this specific variation of the Kubi Knives Vagrant, uh, stick around. So this thing is freaking awesome. I missed that. I'm sorry. That's me. Uh, we'll get into size comparisons, weight, and just a lot of other stuff. But one of the main things that I wanted to talk about was how many different variations of this knife there are and how difficult it is to actually track down one of these titanium versions of it at the moment um you can get it on kubi on the actual website i purchased this variation off of white mountain knives for like just under 100 bucks but i got it at the very end of 2023 they were having some weird ass sale and i think i got a pretty good deal it was like just under 100 bucks i'm cool with it i'm happy um, if I paid what this thing costs, you know, typically, you know, normal price, it's around like 150 bucks. Am I okay with it at that price point? Yeah. Now having it in hand as a consumer, um, I think it's worth that money too. So I, I consider myself very lucky and I'm grateful to have been able to get it at a wonderful deal. Besides all that nonsense, um, there are four different retailers that I pulled up looking up the Kubi Vagrant. There are so many different variations of this and it's really weird and I honestly don't know a whole lot about it. The first one that I wanted to share with you guys was on Blade HQ. If you guys don't know, Blade HQ is one of my favorite online retailers. They only have two variations in stock at the moment. They have like a G10, uh, like a blue G10 one. What's the blade steel on this? And this is the one thing that makes it kind of weird is that on the same model platform name and everything they're using like three or four different blade materials so just kind of keep an eye out um you know it makes it a little complicated i suppose i don't want of you any of you to get like tricked or thinking you're buying something but it ends up being something else the one that's on blade hq it's in what is it austin a I'm um, not the biggest fan of that blade material, but it is relatively inexpensive at $52.95. 50, and then they have this really weird looking variation with a completely different looking pivot and even body hardware. Um, I don't know if this was maybe like a really old variation that's just been hanging out on Blade HQ, um, but that one's also in OS 10A. For whatever reason, this one's fifty-six dollars. So I don't, I don't know why those are the liner lock variations with, you know, budget blade material. Um, those are the ones on Blade HQ. If you go to White Mountain Knives, they have a handful of different ones available, but most of them are not in stock, unfortunately. I think the only titanium one that's left over is the tiger stripe or flame anode one and it's 150 bucks i mean the flame anode thing it's it's definitely like you either find value in it or you don't but even still at 150 bucks i'm not gonna question it i don't i don't mind it at that price they do have g10 variants and os 10 but also they have uh g10 variants in 14c 28n and those are 52.50 versus the os 10a which are 56 dollars i i honestly don't know why the os 10a is a little bit more than the 14c 28n i personally am you know maybe you guys have had a better experience with os 10a and you appreciate whatever properties it may have but for me personally, I love 14C 28 and I have multiple knives throughout my collection of 14C. I love it. I got nothing bad to say about it. It's excellent. 
um, you know, budget mid-grade blade material. It's it's awesome. I could have it on really anything and I probably wouldn't mind as long as it's heat treated well. And apparently it's really easy to heat treat, which is awesome. So consistency from the manufacturer is very much appreciated on my end. Um, on Amazon, another place where you can get a lot of different knives. Uh, Kubi, they have their own little store on there. Very limited models. The only one that I was able to find was the Aus 10 one, but that one's 50 bucks or uh, 49.99. What's kind of weird though is that on the same exact listing, they have different color variations. There's a black one, it's 48 bucks. There's an OD green G10, it's 56 bucks. And then they have, um, what the hell is this one? They have a high vis orange that's seventy dollars, but it's also OS 10A. So this shit's weird. It's really, really weird. I don't know who is making the pricing or who is running any of these actual like listings, but things get really weird, and I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Now, if you go to Kubi's direct website, things are going to be a lot more expensive. Um, this particular variation, if you were to seek this one out, it's going to be 50 bucks more than what you'd be able to find it really anywhere else when they were available. If you wanted to get one, let's say a white mountain knife, for example, 150 bucks. Okay, sure. Yeah, it's great. With S35VN, titanium frame lock, all T hardware, all titanium hardware, backspacer, all, all the good stuff, right? But it's $200 directly from Kubi and is probably going to take three to four times longer than shipping from White Mountain Knives. But it's available on Kubi's website right now. So you kind of got to like pick and choose, you know, what you want to do. At least you have a plethora of options to choose from. Also, another thing, if you follow Kubi on Instagram or other social media platforms, they did just release new variations of the Vagrant. They're using other colors of G10 and Micarta, and then they have a titanium kit on it. So instead of doing steel hardware, like on the budget ones, they have cool, colorful titanium. Also with the bent titanium pocket clip, but the other ones look like they're steel, but they say that they're titanium, but it's a completely different shape of the pocket clip. So it's, it's, it's like, it's not a Vagrant 1.5 or a 2.0 or anything. There are just so many different variations of the Vagrant and it's crazy. I mean, I can understand why it's a wonderful platform. It's very simple. It's good looking. It performs really well. Um, and I'm assuming that it's very easy to manufacture because there aren't many uh, complications to the design overall you know you have flat scales heavy chamfering um i suppose yeah just all the way around it's pretty simple they have their uh their milled pivot all the t8 hardware so they don't really use any other you know size hardware which is great but um they do have t6 screws on you know the other style of pocket clip and i have an example of that actually this is my titanium kubi titus and it is wonderful. I absolutely love this thing. I find so much value in it. Um, these guys too, I mean, they range, I've seen them go for like 150, 175, I think at the absolute most. I got mine for, I think a little bit over 200, uh, me, sorry, sorry, <laughs> a little bit over a hundred bucks and it's great. I love it. Um, you have contoured, micro milled, or I suppose medium milled <laughs> titanium scales. This is not super fine, but you know, you could feel it definitely. But 14 C28 and blade material. So uh, technically a budget blade material, but I don't mind it. It's heat treated well. Um, it's good stuff. I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm really not. But on the new variations of the Vagrant, they have this style of pocket clip. And this is a folded over or bent, stamped, whatever, pressed, whatever, pocket clip out of titanium so you can go and change the color if you wanted if through anodizing but they're using t6 screws on there either way they're both still great pocket clip designs i don't have a gripe with either of them 
I prefer the, you know, I suppose a more robust, milled, sturdier looking one. It's not as deep carry, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, so it's good to go. Um, it's not, you know, really meant for lefty carry. There's no spot there to move the clip around. It's also kind of curved just a tad bit. Um, so it really only is for, you know, right-handed individuals. But, you know, not to say that, you know, a left-handed person can't enjoy this in the right pocket, right? So, um, there's, there's just that little thing I want to share with you guys. It gets, this model gets unnecessarily confusing when it comes to how many different variations of the Vagrant there are. And apparently there are new ones coming out, you know? And the new ones coming out with Micarta and, you know, newer types of uh or colors of g10 oh ultim too they also have an ultim variation um and they have m390 blade material i haven't personally tried any of kubi's m390 before or even like on their oem stuff not to, from what i remember but i'm cool with their 14c it's good stuff um I mean, clearly, I, I have it on this thing. I've put multiple edges on it. And it, honestly, it hardly looks like I've even really used it. It holds up really well. It's good stuff. Good to go. Got no complaints. Um, now, on this variation, this is S35VN. And it can definitely tarnish just a tad bit with the finish that's on here. Um, it's kind of a really, really fine stone wash finish. And I would much rather have seen a heavier stonewash finish, but for what I got this thing for, I'm not gonna do much complaining. It just it would have been cool to see to have seen a couple of different things, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's do some size comparisons. This is definitely a medium sized knife. Uh, then we'll take the weight right after. So over here we have some big ones. This is the full size RSK Doug Ritter Hogue. And then we have the beautiful PM2 Spider Crow. There you go. Let's do some medium ones. Take this a little. There we go. The Wii Praxis. The Vision FG. So similar blade shape to the Vision FG, um, a little bit more of a belly, I suppose, not as long, but the amount of usable cutting edge, it's almost exactly the same amount. The only difference is the Vision FG is longer by maybe a whole inch, but you do have, you know, a space to creep up behind that edge right there. So there's that. And then last two, some more compact designs. This is the Warncliffe CVV Elementum. And the Native 5 Spyderco. So definitely around the size of these two. You know, smaller, more compact, but my personal taste is if there's going to be a small medium to compact style i would definitely like to have some form of forward finger choil if it's kind of like a halvesy thing kind of like right here of course this is a little bit modified uh, by yours truly but you know you typically are able to rest on that flipper tab if you wanted to i just widen that more so i can creep up a little bit more personal preference that's it just a visual thing also um and then on the native five i mean i've you know shouted from the mountaintops this is essentially like one of the most perfect budget usa made knives that you can honestly get or gift to somebody the native five platform is just incredible um so simple so robust and you know this is this could be good for people with big hands that just want a very useful you know length of blade right there so that's it for size comparisons we can go ahead and do the weight i have used this quite a bit and i have put two different edges on it 
with their S35EN um, 3.4. Not bad, not bad, nothing crazy. Nothing super impressive either. Um, would have been really impressive if it was lighter than that, but you do have a half length titanium backspacer that has a little lanyard loop sticking out there. It doesn't poke into your hand at all. Everything's well rounded off and whatnot. Feels good. But um, what was I saying? Oh, about their, about their S35VN. What was I saying about their S35VN? I have put two edges on it. One was a really fine edge. The second one was a, what, well, what's on it right now. It's a much more aggressive coarse edge. And I think that's what I prefer. Uh, and I'm able to achieve that in a shorter period of time than a higher polished, more fancy schmancy looking edge. So now that I'm putting, you know, a 400 grit edge and then stropping with like 0.5 microns just to clean up and give the tiniest little bit of shine to the edge, um, I think that's really my sweet spot when it comes to S35VN. With other blade materials, I tweak it a little bit. Maybe I'll go, you know, to 600 grit or maybe 800 grit possibly, but I'm really starting to enjoy coarser finished edges and it's it's not because i hate sharpening or anything like that i enjoy sharpening it's it's semi-therapeutic i suppose unless you have like a massive chip or a really annoying rolled edge that just won't move over and you know create an apex and whatnot or a burr um but with how this thing is set up the thickness of the grind it is honestly a little thick behind the edge it's not a super tall blade shape and I really do think that this overall design would have been much more benefited if it had a hollow grind. That would be insane. This thing would just fly through material like nothing, like no one's business. But the blade stock thickness on here does seem to be a little bit thinner than average, not by much and is not noticeable. Visually, it is a little bit noticeable, but when you're actually using it, you can't really tell. It just kind of feels like everything else. I don't own calipers, but when I have done it, you know, side by side comparison visually, like to me, it looks like it's about the same, maybe a little bit thinner than most average, at least of my comparison size knives, right? But um, behind the edge thickness, it's not too bad. I mean, you can feel it. It feels kind of like a wedge. Uh, if it was a little bit taller, if the overall uh, size of the knife was just a much larger, allowing for the blade itself to just be a much broader object um, that would allow for the grind to come down and the behind the edge thickness to be much thinner, which would aid in moving through material, right? Um, so preferably, that would have been really cool if there was a hollow grain, even a very, very minimal hollow grain. That would have been very much appreciated. Um, as it is, there's nothing really wrong with it. You just gotta, you gotta put a good edge on there. Uh, what I have on here, now I have my little, my little booklet. I'm on the very last page of my booklet. Every single page that's in here has been every knife every knife that i've sharpened or done work on for other people um like family friends and i've ran out of pages so 90 percent of what's in here i no longer have so i'm just gonna have to go through and just write up a new one or maybe just be like a modern person and make a note in my phone you know the object that i'm recording with right now and carry with me 24 7 yeah, I should probably have all my uh, knife stats and stuff on just a normal little list. But, you know, I'm writing on paper. So the fact that I'm 25 years old and know what paper is, that's kind of impressive, I suppose. Um, could be Vagrant, uh, 17 degree edge. And if anyone is interested, the skiff bearing size, I have a little skiff uh, aluminum card thing for... Uh, their bearings. It's a five millimeter, one sixteenth. So, if anyone's interested, I am most definitely going to get skiffs for this because I think it'll definitely take it to the next level. The bearings that are on here, yes, while they are ceramic bearings, and I believe they are uh, the bronze K 
caged, you know, the, the actual metal cage. They're not like the Teflon or anything like that, the plastic ones. But they're the metal cage ceramic bearings. They're good. They're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But with how skiff bearings are, I do definitely feel like I'd be able to get a much more drop shutty action. The smoothness is wonderful. Honestly, I don't think that skiffs would really change the smoothness, but I think it would allow for me to possibly detune this to where I could have a lighter detent. It drops shut a little bit more, you know, preferably uh, you know, to me. Uh, that's that's what I would definitely like. I would like for this to, to drop shut a little easier. I do have to shake it shut, and I've had this for a long time. I've taken it apart many times now and cleaned it. The hardware on here, it's good. It's fine. It's all T8, which is absolutely excellent. I love it all titanium as well that's just that's a nice little cherry on top it really is um but i do definitely believe the skiffs would take this overall design to the next level i'm definitely going to get it for this guy too now i don't think that for the tidiest or the tittiest the titanium titty i don't think it's actually going to do much for the action because it's pretty darn good it is uh pretty smooth but it's the same deal it's uh you know, you would think with such a large, broad blade that it would just come, you know, straight down. But I do have to shake it a little bit. And I actually have lightened up the detent on here. For a little while, I was actually running it kind of strong. I was like, you know what? I I want to be able to, to appreciate the flipper tab and, you know, just be able to just play around with it more without obliterating my fingers. Um, so... You know that's that's just my my thought on it really i think the skips would definitely improve the knife overall uh so i'm probably gonna pick some up so not a big deal little investment into a wonderful design that you know as is there really isn't anything wrong with it um talking about you know using this thing you know messing around with it disengagement the lock up all that kind of stuff side to side excellent up and down a wonderful now I do have the tiniest, tiniest bit of movement within the pivot, but I'm really, really trying to muscle it. Like I'm trying to feel something and it's there when I look for it. Um, so there's that. Uh, even still, for the price point, the materials that they're using here, the execution, they're still doing an excellent job. And I have really no gripes about it pocket clip as i talked about earlier it's excellent in and out of the pocket i did have to slightly bend the pocket clip because it was floating just slightly above the frame lock and on the close it would have this little musical ting to it but after a while it got a little annoying and it almost gave the knife a cheapy feel when i went to go and close it um, I, so I didn't really like that. That was just a personal thing. It's, it's a weird thing that knife people do. Like if, if their knife doesn't sound a certain way at a certain price point, they want to like, you know, tinker with it to figure it out. Or if you're just lazy, then you just sell it off and just say it wasn't for you. But, uh, knife people are very particular, um, as am I. So that was just, that was one little thing that I did that I, I actually, uh, bowed or bent the the clip so now it doesn't tap at all on the actual uh, scale it's sitting right on it the retention in and out of the pocket is excellent it has the slightest little click when it goes um you know when it's pulled out of your pocket there's plenty of room under there which is cool um talking about if you're able to feel the edge no i mean i'm really trying to get at that from the open space in the back it's perfectly fine that tip you can see it it's right there but i have really short nails right now but even still before i cut my nails i wasn't able to dig out the the tip of it so that's cool it's not gonna get snagged on anything i definitely appreciate that and as you sharpen away some of the material it'll recess more and more until it is no longer a problem uh one great example and uh, it was a knife that i recently got um, this is my third variation of this knife. This is the CMB Made Knives Predator. 
Um, the brand new one that I got, it actually had a different blade. I put that off to the side, but I don't ever remember the blade, act the tip of the blade sticking out so far. Um, the new blade that I got, this is the blade itself that's on this. It's from an old uh, Predator that I put on here and I just kind of, uh, I tuned everything to just, you know, have the one that I want. I wanted to have, you know, my acid, stone wash, and edge, and whatever, and, you know, now I just have an extra blade for when I destroy this whenever in the near future, probably. Um, but on the new blade, I'm actually able to literally, from, from right here, pick out the actual blade itself. Like, it would get snagged on my fingertip, and I would actually be able to pull the blade out. So that is uh, a safety concern, at least for me it is. Um, so that's that's what I mean by you're not able to actually like pick out the, the tip. It's not gonna come out, it's not gonna snag on anything. So that's pretty cool. Uh, on the deployment of this knife, you do have just a hole. It's very simple, not complicated at all. Um, I do remember that when I first got this thing, I was complaining a little bit about having this uh, big piece of material, a part of the scale in the way, but I got used to just flicking outwards instead of up because I'm, I'm so used to f like shooting, uh, you know, further up kind of like with, uh, with an elementum here, you know, I'm used to just popping straight up, but with an, uh, with this elementum, if I shoot, outwards i can still get it but this knife is tuned to where you know I, I tinkered with this knife enough to where um going straight up is the most comfortable and the most reliable for deployment this thing it's extremely smooth it is much much smoother and the tolerances of the bearings and within the pivot and everything is far surpassing that Civivi elementum so I can give it the slightest little kickoff out to the side and it fires, it locks up, um, no trouble, no problem or anything like that. Uh, but I, really my favorite way to deploy this is the middle finger flick. It is very comfy. It is not difficult at all. Um, I don't find myself, you know, sitting on the lock itself and locking myself out. It's great. So that is pretty much it there there's so much to love here it does get complicated when it comes to the different variations of this model but at least as i mentioned before you have a plethora of different variations colorways materials clips blade materials to choose from different finishes as well like you know this has this isn't their typical satin and i hate satin because satin is disgusting satin is not meant to be put on a knife you know to be used it's meant to just, you know, look at and appreciate, right? That's just my opinion, of course. Um, but this is a, you know, between a, a light stone wash and a cheapy bead blast. That's really what it is. And honestly, I don't, at this price point, I'm not going to knock it for it. So a lot of good here. Little to no bad. Um, any possible improvements that I know for a fact would drive up the price. <laughs> if this overall design was like... 25 percent bigger just not by much but just a little bit bigger i think a lot of people would really like this and you might actually be able to sit on the space right if they're, if they're a little bit bigger and also if the design overall was a little bit bigger um with the height and their overall size of you know the larger blade you'd be able to put a um even a shallow hollow grind on the actual on the blade itself which would aid in actual use so that's just that's just me those are, those are a couple little little things that i would suggest for a possible vagrant plus or you know vagrant max like whatever you know, whatever new variation uh which would be really cool and speaking of max that's the designer i think that'd be pretty cool i didn't even think about that but um there's a designer their logo there's a blade seal stamp right there, S35VN, and then Kubi right there. Besides that, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, again, I got this guy for like just around a hundred bucks. The pricing, as I mentioned earlier, is all over the place. So if you just want the shape and the design, you don't care for a frame lock, 
get one of the budget beater ones um they were around like between 50 and 60 bucks not bad at all if you like ultim they got some micro or medium medium milled uh ultim looks really cool looks really clean ultim's not my thing um i definitely prefer something like this but those are liner lock variations which uh to a lot of people could be more fidgety in a way so there's that um any other little thing that, that i missed there is a ceramic detent ball over travel stop hardened steel insert um even the screw for that's also a t8 as well a um, little bit of jimping on the back it's good stuff i like it but i wish it was maybe a little bit further out not a big deal there isn't a forward finger troll essentially or a safe forward finger troll so where they have it it's meant to be really can't complain about that so, that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did go ahead and leave a like down below if you are subscribed thank you so much i appreciate all your support and your patience of course if you are not subscribed consider subscribing because i have plenty more videos and content coming you guys this way and with that being said have a wonderful rest of your day